We were talking about a new product. Actually, it's my first product. Uh, it's a color, color system module. This is it here. It's a integrated color chip and a display module. And, uh, here's, here's one running off the USB power. And uh, here's another one that's attached to uh, another product which is still in development. This is the accessory port for it. It gives it uh, battery power by two double A's. And here you can see it's showing a uh, true color photo on the display. And, uh, so let me just, I'll just go run through some of the features of this. We've got the propeller chip on the back. There's a quarter VGA LCD display. I've got USB for uh, program and power. Uh, there's a full-size SD card, uh, amplified stereo output, uh, three-axis accelerometer. There's eight free propeller pins. Uh, we have an 8-bit uh, DAC and an 8-bit legacy input. Board size is your standard Express PCB size. Actually, that is no secret I use them. And uh, the mounting holes are uh, three inches by two inches. So the power, this, I'll just show you some of the circuit. And uh, there isn't so much in the way of documentation right now. This is kind of it. But uh, I need to work on that. It's just as a brand new product. So, but here you get power by uh, either USB or the barrel connector. And there's a switch to select between those two. And there's a, the power circuits are your standard uh, propeller using an FTPI chip. Um, we've got a little fuse and some an inductor in there, and it's the, the standard circuit from the data sheet to control the power. And we've got the, the standard uh, lights. Uh, here's the, the, the reset circuit over here is the, the standard thing. Uh, but actually, one thing different is that I run the FTD chip with a five volt logic, and because of that, I have some uh, series resistors here to the to the chip for the RX and TX programming. And it, that actually turns out to be a good feature in a way because I heard there's some issues if you connect it directly where the FTD chip can power the prop and vice versa. So having the resistors there actually turns out to be a benefit. And uh, there's your standard uh, LDO down here. Uh, so you can feed in somewhere between 4 volts and 9 volts. Okay, here's the uh, three axis accelerometer uh, MEMS circuit. Uh, the chip just has like, three outputs in here. There's an RC filter on each one. Go to a uh, four input uh, I2C uh, ADC. And uh, one of the other is one free pin, which I bring out on a, a header right here. It's also, this chip has, a, uh, I think it's three or four different G uh, ranges. The normal is uh, 1.5, plus or minus 1.5 G. And uh, up to, you can go up to 6G, and there's uh, two little pins here you can tie uh, high or low to, to select your uh, G range. For the backlight control, so I have a little uh, chip here that does that runs the backlight. Uh, that's this guy right here. It's how you can control the level of the backlight to, to save power. To do that, there's a, a DAC, an I2C DAC. Uh, one channel feeds into, the, into this chip to control the uh, intensity of the, of the backlight. And there's one free channel which comes out on this uh, header right here. One important feature I wanted to make sure I had, no matter what else is on the board, is at least eight free pins. Uh, some of the other things like the RX and TX, you can also use them if you needed to. But these are eight pins that are, are absolutely ju just directly connected to the prop that can be used for anything. So I'm big into audio and video stuff, so I want to make sure there was a head pin on this guy right here. So here's a little circuit. Uh, it's a standard kind of SD circuit for the propeller. Originally I had a micro SD, but I found it kind of a hassle to work with, so I switched over to the full size SD, even though it takes up a large area of the board. There's one little thing I do differently, or maybe two little things. One, I don't use the pull-up resistors. But one other trick I do here is with the, uh, the card detect and the right protect uh, switches. With some uh, 10K resistors here and the two of these prop pins, you can actually detect whether the card is inserted and whether the right switch is engaged. Yeah, this is a, like a cell phone display, basically, TFT, LCD. You can put full color photos on it. There's a couple different modes you can work with this guy. You can work in either 16 or 24 bit colors. There's one uh, push button on the front panel you can uh, use for whatever you want. I have a few different drivers. Uh, you can kind of classify them in either uh, buffered or unbuffered. Uh, by buffer, I mean the, 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 there's a representation of the screen in HUD RAM. For that, I use a 16-bit mode because really it's actually the prop is 
usually using less than that anyway. For a simple operation, I have a version of TV text. It works exactly the same way as TV text. I'm using uh, Clemens as a secret font, which uh, uses the internal ROM font, but scales it down to 8 by 12, so I can do uh, 40 by 20 columns and rows of text. And that works exactly the same way as the regular TV text, so it's uh, very simple to use. There's also a kind of a, what I call the unbuffered mode, where you write directly to the LCD. Actually, it comes pre-programmed with a serial control. You send it commands and the display acts like a, a, your typical serial display, where you can draw lines, do text. You can show Windows bitmaps from the SD card. You can send files back and forth, uh, write data. Normally, the graphics demo works at, at the 256 by 198 resolution, and you can actually increase that up to 320 by 240. The normal graphics demo is a double buffer with 12K of RAM, so basically almost all your RAM's used up with that. But here, like I said, you, you save 12K by using the LCD. And uh, okay, so here's the TV text demo. It works just like the regular TV text. That's kind of interesting. You can actually do a pretty good job of capturing a NTSC video and showing it on in black and white. You know, it's black and white and kind of low resolution, but it's, it's kind of neat to do. Uh, another board I'm working on, it hasn't been fully tested, but I think it's working. It gives you power by two uh, rechargeable double A's, or you could use regular double A's. A little jumper here decides whether it, uh, the recharge circuit's activated or not. Um, there's a, a fuse in there just in case something goes wrong. Uh, there's a, a if there's, there's a jumper to decide whether uh, you can use the ADC channel to measure the battery voltage to see how your batteries are doing. There's a real time clock with a lithium battery backup on the back side of the board. Uh, this is, is a real time clock right here. There's a little crystal for it. Uh, up here is a, a keyboard and mouse connector. Uh, these. If you put these resistors in, you can get the keyboard and mouse going. Uh, there's also, so if you put these resistors in here, you can get the video output, or actually play a video from the SD card onto, out the uh, NTSC port to a monitor. These little guys convert to give you the 3.3 and the uh, five volts out from the batteries. So there's one other thing, guys, you know, I'm working on is, uh, you know, the forum areas, everybody's asking about touch screen, so I'm obliged to try. Um, so I have one. Uh, I have no idea if it works or not yet, so, but I, we have it all put together, so that's kind of uh, the end. <laughs>